Good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. There we go. Good. Uh, welcome to all of you. Welcome to those of you who are watching live stream. Uh, we have a, a big morning planned with worship and with the congregational meeting. Um, those who are watching online will be joining us for our congregational meeting as well. So that will be a new uh, experience. Um, we have this week coming up a, a brat fry on Wednesday night because we live in Sheboygan. So like brat fries all the time, which is great. So we hope that you will join us. It starts at 530. Thank you. I don't know who said that. Yeah, 530. Um, we also, part of that night is going to be for, youth are going to have an activity that night after the meal. Um, and so uh, families will be joining me over at my house, but, um, but I hope that you will make a plan. There, there's no need to RSVP for this uh, brat fry. Just come, bring a friend, bring a neighbor. Um, this is really just a time for us to gather together. We're going to be in the fellowship hall. Um, so... Hope that, you will, hope that you will join us. And then starting next week, after the worship service, we're going to be gathering outside for Cafe Bethany. So this is, this is something new. We've never done this before. Uh, normally we, you know, pre-COVID, we would, after our worship service, go in and enjoy some coffee and, and some goodies and just sit around tables and, and uh, enjoy some, some time together. We're doing that same thing this summer, only we're going to take it outside. We're going to have a tent set up. And, and tables with umbrellas. Uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're trying to have some music. We'll have games for kids. The idea is that it's going to be kind of an outdoor cafe. And we really just want it to be a time when we can connect with each other, but also where, where our neighbors can connect with each other and with us. So we just hope that you will join us next week as we uh, launch this. Uh, if you would like to help out a week or two with, with some of the setup or teardown, um, Please talk to me or email the church, and we'll get you to the person. Well, it's actually Ron the rear. We'll get you his contact information, and uh, we'll get you on that team. All right. Excellent. Um, we uh, we were actually starting the worship. We're actually starting the congregational meeting during the worship service. I can explain this because because it's worshipful. Like we're not doing any business during the worship. But we wanted to, to share some things with you that, were, that, that call for prayer and celebration. So we're going to do that together. Um, and then we're going to have a break at the end of the service. We'll do our normal benediction and doxology. And then we'll have a five-minute break. If you need to leave, you can leave at that time. If you need to take a bathroom break or get some coffee, you can do that. And then we'll come back in and do kind of the business portion of our, of our meeting. And we'll explain the details um, at that, pan that point. If you have questions at, in at any point, um, we're going to take all the questions at the end. So if you're afraid that you might forget it, you might want to get something out so you can write it down, right? I mean, that's what I have to do. Or get out your phone and, and, and type your question into your notes on your phone or whatever. So, um, yeah. What? My mic is not on. Can can you turn, turn, turn up just maybe a little bit for, thank you. All right. Let's press pause. Let's press pause because I'm, if you can't tell, my brain's kind of going in a bunch of different directions. And I want to be here. I want to be completely here and completely engaged in worship. So let's, let's pause, take a deep breath, and prepare our hearts to worship. Father, we thank you for gathering us here and ask that you would meet with us, that you would encourage us, that you would strengthen us, that you would direct us, that you would uh, bind us together in your love. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Stand and let's worship the Lord together.
pray. Gracious God, when we think about your name, and when we say your name is majestic, we are reminded of mountain vistas, powerful waterfalls, a night sky filled with stars, uh, Lake Michigan uh, blowing and the, pay, and the waves crashing. Your name is majestic. It is beautiful. It is powerful. It is like no other. And we have gathered to worship you. We thank you for bringing us together and giving us the opportunity to be your people and to worship you on this day. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Would you turn and look at the camera right there, a little blue light, and greet everyone online, wave to them. And now take a moment to greet one another. We also have some kids' pages in the back. I think it's right around the corner outside if you want to grab one. Take some time and then have a seat. So our, um, our passage of scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew. Uh, it's a short passage, uh, just three verses. And um, it's two little stories packed into these three verses. And so we're going to read them to you several times. I'm going to read the first story, and Jane will read the second. And then I'll read it again in a, in a translation, and she'll do the same. And then we're going to give you a modern version of the story, each of us together. So... Uh, let your imaginations, uh, warm up your imaginations. Uh, see what the kingdom of God is like. God's word to us today from Matthew 13, starting in verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. God's kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field, hidden for years, and then accidentally found by a trespasser. The finder is ecstatic. What a find! And proceeds to sell everything he owns to raise money and buy the field. Or God's kingdom is like a jewel merchant on the hunt for exquisite pearls. Finding one that is flawless, he immediately sells everything and buys it. Or for a modern version, the kingdom of heaven is like a young swimmer who's been competing for a few years practices hard, competes hard, has won medals locally and regionally. After one regional meet, a man walks up to him and hands him a card and tells the young athlete to have his parents call him. It's a scout of a famous coach, and the scout has been watching this teenager at several meets. He's sent film to the coach. The coach wants to take this swimmer on as one of his athletes. Now, of course, this means greater commitment, right? Longer hours of practice, less free time. It also means the swimmer has to move to leave his family and friends so that he can live in a training facility near the coach. On the other hand, this is the kind of coach who's almost guaranteeing this swimmer a real shot at the Olympics. And he's, regardless, he's going to travel to national and international meets. He's going to experience a way of life that he'd been dreaming about ever since he started swimming. Those, there's no way this young athlete is going to turn this opportunity down. Oh, 
Still in your painted face. Natural dyed blanket stitched vest. Hmm, a little rip. Fixable. Oh, if only you had your hand stitched polyvinyl. Hat! I found them! I found them! I found them! Buster! Quiet down! Excuse me, can I help you? Uh, yes, you can you help take his paws off my pal. Uh, 50 cents for all this junk. Oh, now, how did this get down here? the sheriff. Nice and easy. Very well. Five dollars. I'm sorry. It's an old family toy. No! Now just walk away. Wait! The other way. Uh, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. 50 bucks ain't bad. It's not for sale. <laughs> Everything's for sale. Or, or trade. Uh, you like my watch? Sorry. He's safe. Way to go Ooh, in his mouth! All right. <laughs> she showed him. Uh, lady, Molly, don't touch lady, that, lady, lady. Lady. Oh. Yeah, go home, Mr. Or a young woman is at the start of her career. She's been in an established company for a few years now and has already received several promotions and she really enjoys her work. She enjoys her team and she mostly enjoys her boss as well. But one day she gets a call, a call from an old manager. He's referred her to the CEO of a startup a startup company that's been developing a product for several years. This CEO has a good track record, both with the businesses that he's launched and with how he treats his employees. The product has proven successful. It meets a real need and it does it really well. Now the company is ready to expand and the CEO needs someone to lead that expansion. After several interviews, the CEO offers this young woman a position. In fact, he invites her to name the salary that she would need to be excited enough to leave the job she's in to join this new company. She names it, and he agrees immediately. She doesn't take much time needing to decide. She talks with her husband about the changes. It's a startup after all. It's not established company. She'll have to be working with new people, and she'll have more responsibility, and she'll have lots to learn. But there's no real question here. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and the benefits far outweigh the risks and the costs. So she puts in her notice and begins planning a celebration. This is God's word to us today. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like uh, a merchant looking for pearls. You may not have noticed this, but uh, these two little kingdom stories actually tell us very little about the kingdom of God. We don't learn any new details that describe the kingdom, uh, what its qualities are, or how to see it, or how to recognize it, or even where to find it. No, the point of these two kingdom stories is simply to show how people who get a glimpse of the kingdom respond. People who discover the kingdom do these kinds of things. People who get a taste for the kingdom respond in these sorts of ways. And they do it naturally, instinctively. Uh, Jesus is not saying uh, people who see the kingdom are supposed to work, act this way. Uh, they just do these things. People who get a taste of the kingdom just do it. So Jesus isn't giving us instructions. When you notice the kingdom, first do this, then do that, right? I mean, that would be like telling uh, a young person, uh, if you happen to find $100 on the ground, bend down and pick it up, right? Oh, and if you want to jump up and down a few times or raise your hands or do a happy dance, and don't forget to text your friends, OMG, I just found $100. You don't have to tell a teenager that, do you? You don't have to tell anybody that. That's just what they do. People who find a, a treasure don't have to be told to celebrate. They just do. It's natural. It's spontaneous. Their joy is enthusiastic. Their joy is a little happy dance. You guys have a happy dance, right? Should I make you stand up and show me your happy dance? Uh, when is the last time you did a happy dance? 
Now think about it. When is the last time you did a happy dance? When is the last time you felt ecstatic and just cut loose? When's the last time you felt so excited that you just had to phone a friend or better drive over to tell them the news in person so you could do the happy dance together? That's what happens when we find something that is a treasure. And if your answer is, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, that's really not, that's not really who I am. Um, I probably haven't done that since I was young, a child. If that's you, listen to these words of Jesus carefully because they're for all of us. Jesus called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus may not tell us what the kingdom is like, but he does tell us that those who find it, those who see it, are full of joy. They do a happy dance. They celebrate. Now, joy is not the only response that people make when they discover the kingdom. Something else happens. I, I'm sure you caught this, but, uh, but the kingdom of God is not like finding a $100 bill that, that's on the ground where you just pick it up and take it. The kingdom of heaven is not like a gift that you simply hold out your hands to receive, though it's still very much a gift. Uh, no, in these stories we find that the kingdom of God is like an invitation that expects a response. It, it, it's, it's like an amazing opportunity that requires some action. It, it's like a once-in-a-lifetime investment, but you have to buy into it. Of course, the payoff is so great that the response, the cost, the changes required, are, they're no-brainers, right? I mean, yes, you may have to sacrifice. You may have to sell all you own. You may even need to uproot your life and move. But compared to what you get, compared to the wealth you receive, compared to the power you will gain, compared to the quality of life, again, you just can't call it a sacrifice, I mean, would it be a, a sacrifice to sell your little two-bedroom home if you end up in a seven-bedroom home on the lake with a pool and, of course, with housekeepers to clean up everything, including maybe a vacation home on, a, on your favorite lake? No. Okay, if I have to. Or maybe you've been... Oh, maybe you own a small business, say a, a small uh, used car lot, and, and you've been working there for years, you've, you've put your heart and soul into it, and you have an opportunity to sell your business and buy a thriving dealership that sells luxury cars to millionaires. It's not even a question. You'll sell it all so you can take hold of this opportunity. The kingdom of God requires action. The kingdom demands investment. Uh, the kingdom isn't yours. The kingdom isn't mine until we rearrange our lives to make room for it. Again, it can hardly be called a sacrifice. And there may be a loss, but compared to what you gain, the man who found the treasure, in his joy, went and sold all he had. In his joy, went and sold all he had. I need to remind you of something we've been talking about in recent weeks. The kingdom of God is near. That's Jesus' good news. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's accessible. It's something you can experience. And it's so good, you almost can't imagine it. It's a treasure that's so valuable, it will change your life. And once you get a glimpse of the treasure, you will change your own life. Do whatever it takes to grasp it, to get it. 
The kingdom of God is near. You can experience it now. So what are you going to do? Just sit there and nod your head and kind of go on with life as usual? Or are you going to start paying attention? Look around. Seek it. Pursue it. Because Jesus promises that there is treasure for the finding. There's joy waiting to be experienced. There's life. Not just a good life, a great life. A full life. Abundant life. It's just waiting to be lived. Let's pray. Gracious God, we, we've heard this before. We've heard this before, and we believe it. We believe it's true. In fact, we could probably point to moments when we've seen you, seen the kingdom, seen Jesus as a treasure. That's there's lots of stuff going on right now. And we've, most of us have been going to church for a long time. Uh, we're not sure there's that much more. And some of us even may doubt whether we would call it a treasure or not. And so, Lord, we simply ask that you would give us eyes to see and a heart that desires more, a heart that's hungry to see your kingdom, that will wake up, that will look, that will seek, that will pursue. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we enter into a time of prayer, I just want to make mention that June Roslin had her 94th birthday this past week. So that's a great piece of news, something we can rejoice in. So let's join uh, together in prayer. Father, we're mindful that uh, this is the day and the calendar in our country that we call Father's Day. And as we have just heard about what does it mean to be part of your kingdom, we naturally want to ask the question, what does it mean, Father, for Christian men who are dads to fulfill the role you've called them to fulfill? We know that not all fathers do that role perfectly. In fact, none of us do it perfectly. We know there are others who struggle or perhaps have other ongoing issues in their life or even things as bad as addictions. But we pray, Father, for all of the dads that are present here and are watching us online, that you will encourage them in what they are doing, that you will continue to show them the way, not only by the Uh, example of Christ and how he lived his life and loved people and all of that, but also by the instructions that are found in your word, the, the truths that guide, the principles that guide our everyday lives. And so we're thankful for those who served as our own fathers, and we're thankful, Father, for those who have, uh, who are currently uh, in whatever phase of fatherhood they find themselves. We pray for the marriages in our uh, church community and, and as well as uh, the marriages that extend out into our uh, wider families. We pray for those marriages that may be struggling and uh, ask that your spirit will intervene in a good and, and in a new way. Father, we want to uphold people who need your healing grace at this time. We pray for Dolores Hartlaub, who lost her brother last week to death, and just ask that your comfort and grace would be with her. We pray for uh, Deb as she is uh, having to deal with the doctor. Um, 
because of issues with her ankles, and uh, we just pray that you'll give her your healing grace at this time. We want to continue to uphold all those who have lost loved ones and all those who have uh, needed your healing presence in their lives, and uh, we just ask that your grace will definitely prove sufficient for each and all of them. And so, Father, we're thankful that one of your kingdom principles was to teach us a prayer that reflects what it means to belong to your kingdom. Let's pray that together, our Father, who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh. See, if I had just left the platform now, the deacons would get a little on edge because, you know, we have opportunity to give of ourselves, not just monetarily, but in the way we use our talents and our gifts as an expression of our love for God and the way he equips us with what is needed in the body of Christ. And uh, so I invite you as we uh, consider what does it mean to give, first of all, especially for those who are online, the, we have the online way of giving, uh, the way of giving uh, through your phone as well as good old U.S. mail. So I invite you to simply put your hands together like this and picture uh, what can I give to God today or this week? Maybe something I haven't given before. Maybe something that again is a great reflection of what it means to be part of his kingdom. So let's pray. Father, we want to give of ourselves in such a whole, complete, and joyous way that it impacts us deeply. Um, may that continue to be one of the sources of joy and inspiration in our lives when we fully give ourselves to you and to your lordship and to, uh, as a reflection of love and grace. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Congregational meeting, part one. That's just a really bad way to start this, isn't it? Now, we're, we're going we're gonna to take some time worshiping around what we're going to share with you. Because there's good news and there's hard news. And we want to do this in, in a community that worships together. So uh, I'm going to share some information with you. Uh, we're going to reflect right now on our past year. Um, and then we're going to pray and sing. And then we're going to do that again, talk about what's happening this summer, uh, pray and sing, and then we'll take a break, and, um, and then after our break, we'll, we'll commence the, the business portion of the meeting. So uh, we, we have three sections. The first is on um, the loss and growth we've experienced over the past year. Um, the next section will be on the turning point that this summer is for Bethany. And then our first steps into the fall and beyond. Um, I should say that I'm just going to talk through this. So again, if you have a question, we will take questions at the very end and, and be happy to answer them. But, but for right now, for, for efficiency's sake, we're just going to move through these um, as, uh, as just a presentation. Um, so let's talk about last year. How do you even talk about last year, right? I mean, have we ever experienced a year that has brought so much change. Um, we had both loss uh, and growth. So we lost normal, right? We lost normal for a whole year. We lost members. Um, we, we had to worship from home for most of the year. We lost all of our usual programming, all the opportunities that we enjoy of getting together socially, we lost. Um, the worship team, every Wednesday night was here 
recording for an hour plus. And, and that was in addition to Sunday morning. Um, masks and social distancing, right? I mean, it's good to be here without masks, but it's been a long, long year. Um, Zoom meetings. Our staff meetings the whole year were on Zoom. Consistory meetings were on Zoom. Ministry teams were on Zoom. Uh, it was not easy. Uh, we got used to it, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. We also lost some members um, in the past year. And so we just thought we'd take a moment to, to remind ourselves of those that we have lost. We lost uh, Joan Daney and Lori Gottschalk, Jim Hoopman, Ernie Mizey. We lost Phil Oostdyke, Sharon St. Charles, Lolly Wade, and Ken Wentz. Friends of ours, family members who are no longer with us to worship and to enjoy life. We've also had some members who have transferred, and we just wanted to name it. it it's, it's reality. Um, we have some families who have decided for many different reasons, because we've talked to each one of them, um, why they left. Uh, for some, it was to be with family. Uh, for others, it was to find a church that supported their ministry. Uh, whatever their reason, these are not people who have left the faith. These are people who have simply looked for another church where they could worship and serve in a way that God was calling them to. And so in a moment, we're going to pray for them. Uh, actually, we'll just stop right now and pray for them. And I just, again, I, I want to encourage you that um, when you see them, they are brothers and sisters in Christ. They're brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, uh, this isn't the complete list, right? There are many people that we're still wondering about. There, there are people that we're wondering about that we know they're coming back. They just haven't chosen to, to join us in person yet. Um, there are people who have been gone for a while and wonder if we care. And so if you recognize that someone's not been here for a while, it'd be a simple thing to do to just call them and say, hey, I just want you to know I miss seeing you at church. Or write them a card. Uh, we care together. Uh, the elders have tried to stay in contact this past year with our community groups. Um, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But we as a body care for one, one another. So let's just stop and pray and just pray for the families who have experienced losses this year and for us as a church family who has experienced losses as well. Gracious God, our hearts are heavy when we think about those that we have lost for families, and, and we just named the members, but there are many families who lost um, fathers and mothers, uh, sisters and brothers. Uh, we just pray that um, you would bring comfort and encouragement to them. We pray for those who have decided to leave Bethany to, to worship at other places. And of course, it's hard to say goodbye but we know that they're not leaving the faith. They're simply finding uh, the place that you're calling them to worship. We pray that you would make that clear to them and that you would give them opportunities to grow and to serve you there. And Lord, we'll just acknowledge that this loss creates fear in us. And I pray that you would help us move past our fear to reach out to those that we haven't seen in a while, to... Uh, encourage one another to, uh, to do the little acts of love with each other that will help us know that we all belong. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Next thing to talk about is our attendance. So our weekly attendance, we just kind of very generally broke it into uh, summer, fall, and then in person. So summer, fall of 2020, we averaged about 50 to 60 live stream screens. Now, the thing about that number is that that's screens, not people, right? So 50 to 60, for one screen, that's one person. For another screen, that's four people or six people or two people. You, you, you can't, there's not an exact number. 
Um, when we had our outdoor services, we had 60 to 80 people join us. And then in addition, so that's for the people who are live stream. If, you, if people watched it later on Sunday or sometime during the week, we averaged about 35 to 55 um, YouTube views. Again, we have very little control to know, like, did they sit there the whole time or did they... Uh, this is beyond the three-minute mark, but we don't really have... We, we can't capture that data. Um, currently, we are worshiping 55 to 70 in person, plus our 20 to 30 screens that are watch, watching online, okay? And um, still at about four, 20 to 40 YouTube views later on in the week. We, we kind of monitor that every week. So, I mean, if you do the numbers, um, Bethany had a lighter year of a worship attendance, but we still had a lot of participation around worship, and that's a good thing, something to celebrate. Um, another thing to celebrate is um, Act 2, our, our renovation of, of our fellowship hall and uh, other things. Um, I would like to ask the, the, those who are on the Act 2 committee to stand right now, if you would. This will not be everyone, but I wanted to embarrass them, force them to stand. Ron, stand. Peg stand, all those who are on that stand. They've been working on this for two plus years, three years. Can we just thank them? So let's, let's take a look at what they managed. Um, here's some pictures of the Fellowship Hall. You've probably seen it, and if you haven't, you need to go in. Uh, new flooring, the whole thing is painted. The thing that was installed this last week that very few of you have seen is that there are now slide, blinds, electric blinds on the windows. So, yes, there are two windows in the fellowship hall, in case you've never noticed that before. We have blinds that, that are electronically programmed so that we can go up and down. Pretty cool, huh? So, it's up high where kids can't find it, or pastors either, because they like to play. Uh, kitchen was re completely, the flooring in the, com the kitchen was redone, and the lenters room flooring was done as well. In addition to that, the entire hallways that aren't brick, I should say, um, were painted. And so we had a crew that um, organized and painted and took off bulletin boards. And so I know that some of them are here. If you helped with the painting, would you please stand? All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. And then um, our outdoor, outdoor sign, which we are like, it's a growing project. It's a learning project. Um, and uh, Terry and um, a few others are working on that. But we had that installed, and um, that's working now. So all those things are, um, are happening, have been happening and are a result of the Act 2 team's um, work. Um, they are about done with um, Phase 1. Um, the, the one thing that's left that I'm aware of is that in the fellowship hall, we're going to put in sound panels because the hard flooring ec echoes more. And so they're going to put in sound panels so that it'll be quieter. It'll be as quiet as it was with the carpet. That's happening in the next few weeks. Um, we are going to meet sometime soon with the consistory and the Act 2 team um, to discuss what phase 2 looks like and the direction that that's going to go. Um, and, and one of the reasons that we need to talk about that is because we're, we're depleting our... our our funds for that, you know, so we, we need to kind of have a conversation, not just with the leadership, but also with you about, you know, are we ready for step two? So that is, that's going to be coming up as well. Um, another way that we changed this year is that, uh, that we grew this year is that we innovated. We, we had to innovate. So our worship, we went from no video to live stream services and recordings uh, we made sure that in all our videos, or we tried to make sure that every week we had an intergenerational experience. Other people than the worship team uh, leading prayers or reading passages. We interviewed um, uh, people from our, for our missions of the month. We, we tried new worship practices like, I mean, chatting, at least trying to chat in, in, in the screen or in the online. Um, pressing pause is new this year. Um, Trying, doing an offering in a different way. Like everything we did, we had to think through and, and see how it was working. Um, our Zoom meetings, um, can't say that we love them, but, you know, with a small group like staff, it became normal. And, and it worked well. Um, so uh, we also got new internet this year. 
that's a real celebration because that's allowed us. I didn't even think to add that. But um, other innovations we did, um, we did a home VBS last year. We experimented with that. We did a key, kids connection this spring. We've been doing Faith for Life starting the fall all year. Um, had a great intergenerational turnout. Um, that became a kind of a small group. Uh, we did tailgates, uh, card making, Zoom cafe. Uh, we kept most of our, our outreach. Um, some of, and we even expanded, like, the Mental Health of America is a new partnership that we're hoping to do annually, work annually with them. So, but everything required that we adapt. And, and we did. And, and some things worked really well. And some things didn't. And that's just the reality of, of a world where everything's changing, right? You, you've got to try new things. And not all the new things that you try are going to be uh, home runs, but even in those that don't work, you learn, and you adapt, and, and you grow. And that's what we're, we're committed to doing. Um, finances. Now, if you were to ask me at the beginning of last year, at the beginning of the pandemic, what's going to happen with the finances, I would have said, oh my goodness, I hope we break even. It's going to be a struggle. And I, I was just surpri surprised, shocked, that it, there was just unexpected grace around our finances this year. Um, we were able to cut expenses. Um, our assessments from the denomination and from the classes were reduced several times um, or, or forgiven. Um, we, got, we, we took advantage of the two payroll protection plan loans. One of them has already been forgiven, so we do not have to pay the first one back. The second one, we still, um, we, we're not sure yet. We haven't, it's not eligible for us to apply for that yet. Um, there has been a, a, a real increase in online giving, which we had never really done before. And, and then just Bethany members were faithful in giving this year. You, you just did. You, 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 envelopes kept coming into the office uh, every week. And, um, and we were just surprised at how, how much you gave, how well God provided. And, and so when we look at our giving versus expenses, now this is for, from July 2021 up through last month, through the end of May, um, our income was $319,900, um, and our expenses were $284,300. So we are ahead in our, just our giving over our expenses by over $35,000. That's, I mean, that's just... Wow. Again, if you had asked me last year, would we be sitting in this place now? I would have said, well, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't God, wouldn't God have done a miracle, right? Wouldn't God have shown us so many uh, miracles? Um, and so that's where we're at financially. Let me, let me give you a, a kind of an overall picture. Um, right now in our general fund, we have 208400 thousand, uh, two hundred eight thousand four hundred dollars. Um, in our congregational care fund, we have sixty seven hundred. Uh, property is nineteen thousand. That's just part of the property fund. There's other funds that cover other major expenses. Just so you know that, um, we have ten thousand in our memorial fund and um, over two hundred thousand in our designated fund. That's where we're standing financially right now. Melissa and I did the numbers this week, so they're, they're up to date. Um, in the designated fund, I just want to pull out three things. Um, in there, we have major capital improvements. We have almost $90,000 set aside for that. Um, we put money into that account, both for the technology upgrade that we were going to make this year, uh, most of which is done, and to also resurface part of the parking lot. Uh, we're not going to be able to ever afford to do the whole thing at one time, but we're going to take the, the, we're hoping to do the worst third of it and, and redo that. So we're, we're getting um, up-to-date up bids on that. Um, Act 2 has $40,000 in it. However, some of those are designated funds and are, are designated for certain areas of the, of the project. Um, and then the gym... We still have $80,000 that we have not designated for the gym. And part of the reason that we have not designated it yet was because we couldn't talk with you about what that would look like and where it goes. So now that we can meet together, uh, the elders and deacons are going to be talking about how 
we might recommend that we disperse those funds and we will include you in on that conversation. Okay? So, uh, again, just an overview, and this is, uh, there are others in the designated funds. Those, those are just the main ones I wanted to point out. Um, so, just an overview for this year. Um, we had surplus income of 35000 We have the PP loans that were forgiven. That's $43,000. We may add another forty three to that if that one is forgiven as well. But for sure, we have the first PPP loan forgiven. So we're ahead this year by almost $80,000, $79,234. And after your generous offering this morning, it'll be even more. So isn't that, I mean, don't you want to do a happy dance? I, I wanted to do a happy dance when I saw those numbers. Yeah. Um, okay, so we still have concerns. We know that there are concerns. We've, we've lost members. We have members that have not chosen to reconnect yet. Uh, we have staff and volunteers who have gone through this year with us and are tired, exhausted. Um, all of us are tired of change, right? We're not coming into this summer just bursting with energy. Uh, we have lost our normal channel of communications over this past year. I mean, this is the first congregational meeting we've had in a year and a half. We sent out a report last spring that kind of detailed our, gave you kind of a report on the budget and everything, but we didn't actually, we weren't able to meet, and we didn't meet in December as well. So this is the, we've just missed those channels. The bulletin has to be downloaded. Not everybody has chosen to do that. We need to work on our communication. Um, and, and we're noticing, and we know that it's going to be real, that there are different patterns of church engagement, um, especially with younger families than, have, than there's been in the past. Our world is not exactly the same as it was before. And the reality is, is it probably won't go back to exactly the same. And, and we can lament that, and we can grieve that, but we can also say, what do we need to do to do what God has called us? And that's kind of where we're at. We're also sitting in the midst of blessings. We are financially healthy. We have thriving, growing partnerships. Um, our leadership has been incredibly flexible this year uh, and has been ex incredibly committed. Um, and I sense, this is my own personal take, I sense a, I sense a readiness. I, I sense a readiness that, that uh, God has been bringing us to a place where he's got something for us to do, something that may be new, something that may be important. And um, my sense is that he's been getting us ready for that work. And so I'm excited about that, and I hope that you are too. We're going to take a moment now to, to pray, to lament, and to celebrate, and then sing a song of celebration, um, and then we'll do part two, which is much shorter. As we prepare to pray, I read two quotes recently, and they've stuck with me. Uh, the first one is, joy and sorrow are sisters. They live in the same house. And the other is, grief does not cancel joy, and joy does not negate grief. Grief and joy coexist. Now, that second one, I'm not really sure where I got it. I think I actually merged three different people's words together, but we're going to go with it. And as I was listening to John share all of those things, I realized there are moments this year in our church community and in our whole lives that are reasons to pause and to lament and feel the weight of grief. But there are also moments of joy, of good things that God is doing. And it isn't that we choose one or the other, it's that they exist together. And we bring all of those things to God as we um, pray together about the things he is doing. So would you pray with me? Father God, we come to you today both grieving loss and feeling joyful. This past year has meant loss for us as individuals, for us as a community. And these losses are real. They've been painful. They leave us sad or angry or anxious or even afraid or some mix of all of those together. God, we have wanted someone to blame. And there really isn't anyone to blame for our hurt or the pain that we've experienced this year. And so we bring it to you because you can handle it. You have walked with us through it. 
So we lament the losses of loved ones this year, members of our congregation that we miss, uh, many for whom we were unable to gather to remember in a funeral or memorial service as yet. And our hearts ache when we think of Joan and Lori, Jim and Ernie and Lolly, Phil, Sharon and Ken. In many ways, we wish that they were with us today at this meeting. But we rest knowing that they are experiencing your goodness to the full. We are saddened by the loss of members who were once a part of our community and now are doing your kingdom work somewhere else. We ask that you continue to work in them and in us as we continue to serve you even if we don't see each other as often. Thank you for the time that we had together and bless all of the ways that you are working in this community. Lord, we have experienced other losses individually and, and as a community just around losing the normal, what we had for so long considered normal. We wonder why you would permit such upheaval for us do you notice how difficult this is and has been? Do you see the struggle that we've dealt with? And Lord, we know that you hear us, that you see us, and not only do you see us from afar, but you walk right with us. We lift up these losses that we've experienced this year to you, and we ask that you would help us to see where you were present in it. We bring our mixed emotions to you, God, knowing that you, you truly know us and know where we are. In so many ways, many of us are tired of change. We are weary after a difficult year and we are reminded of your words to your people through Jeremiah. For I have given rest to the weary and joy to the sorrowing. God of mercy, you hear us. And you don't brush away our hurt or dismiss it. You sit with us. You have been sitting with us. And you continue to be with us. In fact, there are many things to celebrate as well. You have done much in this season. We have experienced your blessings. We look around and notice them. We have been blessed with hard-working volunteers and staff who have used this time to update the spaces in our church. It looks so beautiful. You have gifted us with creativity and the right people in the right places that allow us to pivot to a new rea reality very quickly. You provided resources just in the right time to help us along the way. Your creative spirit has inspired us to try new things. Some of them resulted in stronger connections and stronger uh, partnerships. And we praise you that we were able to worship and work outside these walls in our community to bring your wholeness and peace in Sheboygan. We are astounded by your great provision. You have blessed us by the way that we have had enough, not just to meet expenses, but to exceed them which we would not have probably imagined. You have, we have been able to put money aside that will propel us into the new year. We are grateful that you are the king of abundance and that we have experienced it this year. Thank you for this reminder that you are trustworthy and that you desire goodness for your people. Help us, we pray, as we continue to seek to be faithful stewards in this next season, trusting you to provide for us. God, you are good. You are very good. And we praise you. Thank you for being with us in this season, for being with us in the loss, and also for working so wonderfully and powerfully in our midst this year. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are good. We want to do a happy dance. We want to praise you with our dance. Especially we found the treasure of the field, the pearl of great worth. I will sing to the 
be seated. Just uh, a quick overview of where we're at this summer. We're, we're at a turning point, okay? Uh, this summer we need a fresh start. Uh, we need to re-engage families, uh, children, youth. Uh, we need to reconnect with each other. Uh, we need to clarify Bethany's mission and Bethany's readiness to follow God wherever he leads. We're at a turning point. We have a need this summer for a fresh start. Uh, we're also experiencing the, the need to adapt to in-person and online. Um, online church is here to stay. It, it is. It, it's not just a backup plan for when people are on vacation or when they're sick or whatever. Um, for some, online is a, a safe home. For our culture, online is not necessarily second class or just if I have to. People buy cars online now. People shop for groceries online now. People get seminary degrees online now, right? We have to adapt 
There are new ways that we need to find of ministering online uh, that will include worship as we're doing now, but also connection and growth. And nobody has the answers to this yet. We need to explore, try, think outside the box. We're at a turning point. We're at a turning point with our staff. Um, as you know, Perry, Mary and Paul have uh, resigned. Uh, Jill Harmlink is retiring at the end of the summer. It's kind of a fuzzy retirement date. Jill Posowitz is also retiring in the next month or so. Um, Camber Posowitz uh, is our interim for youth. She will remain our interim, but she has limited time. Um, and, of course, Jane Carlson has graduated from seminary. Um, and she's not planning to leave Bethany anytime soon, but her role could change. Do you see that this is our entire ministry staff, except for pastors? So pastors, office, worker, office staff, uh, groundskeeper maintenance, uh, those are the ones that are here and remaining. Everything else is kind of up for grabs. And so we have an opportunity to restructure. We could choose simply just to fill holes, or we can look at a big picture and talk about restructuring, re-putting together new staff descriptions. We have a responsibility to do this wisely, and we need to do it together in conversation. Because how we restructure our staff will impact the direction we head will impact how we follow God into the future. So it's important conversations that we need to have. Um, and because we're at this place where we have a, a fresh start in person and online worship and um, a staff transition, we need to be asking ourselves and praying for a clear vision. What is God inviting Bethany to focus on? in the near future. What is our mission that drives us? And so we will be having those conversations soon, but right now we're going to have uh, Monica come up and pray for guidance and leadership. Uh, we're going to sing a final song and then we'll take a break. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we know that your arms are wide open and you want us to always turn to you. We can turn to you in a season of loss as we grieve losing members from our Bethany family. We can turn to you in a season of joy as we reconnect after the pandemic and celebrate the growth and the gifts you have given us. Most importantly, Lord, we can and we must turn to you and ask your guidance as we move forward. We are so thankful that we can once again worship together and reconnect with our Bethany family. We know, however, that our world and our church have changed because of the pandemic. We ask, Lord, that you would guide our church and help us to follow where you lead. Help us to be open to new opportunities as we engage in the work of discerning the mission and vision you have laid out before us. We ask that you raise up leaders and staff members as we restructure and go through this time of transition. We ask that you show us what we need to hold on to, what we need to let go of, and what new things we need to bring to Bethany so that we may continue to grow and fulfill your mission. In Jeremiah 29, 11, Lord, you have declared that you know the plans for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us hope in a future. We boldly hold on to that promise today, Lord. 
we know that you have a future laid out for Bethany Church. And we humbly ask that you show us those plans and you help us to fulfill that to your honor and glory. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for being with us in all seasons of life. Help us now to hold on to those promises as you lead us into the future. Amen.
My prayer for you this week is that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you his peace. Praise God from whom all.